Tell me, if you were allowed to classify your ethnicity or race as your religion, how would you feel about that, sir? Today we're going to talk about the topic of being able to classify your ethnicity or race as your religion. It's wonderful that we all have the right to classify our race as our religion, isn't it? Isn't it beautiful? Wait, wait a minute. That's not a right? That's not really technically a right? Wait, uh, hold on. Give, give me a different script here. I, hold on. I'm, I'm sorry. I must have jumbled my notes up or something like that. Oh, oh, that's right. Okay. There's only one group that's allowed to classify their race as their religion and get away with it without people gang mobbing them about it. Ah, okay. Only one group? I thought everybody was able to do that. I thought everybody was doing that. I, shit, what world have I been living in? <clears throat> oh, okay. All right, so now that I've got my notes in order, folks, um, it looks like there's only one group in the world that's allowed to classify their race as their religion at the same time. Hmm. I wonder what group that is. You know which one that is, don't you? Yes. So, we all agree and everybody knows and acknowledges that racism itself in and of itself is the problem, whichever group it comes from, no matter what period. Of course it is, naturally. So, why is it okay, then, that one group classifies their, or is allowed to, rather, classify their race or ethnicity as their religion, as the same thing, and use the same word for both? Why? Why aren't you allowed to do that? Think about how absurd it would be if you were allowed to call yourself a mongoloid religionist. So, if you were to use the term and say, I'm a mongoloid, if you're of East Asian descent or something. And then what you, someone asks you, what's your religion or lack thereof? Oh, I'm mongoloid. That's my religion or lack thereof. Mongoloid. Huh? That's your ethnicity, your race. I'm asking what's your religion or your belief. Oh, yeah, mongoloid. Mongoloid. I'm a non-religious mongoloid. I'm a religious mongoloid. But mongoloid is the religion. Weird. Or if you were to go to Saharan or Sub-Saharan Africa and ask around and be like... Uh, What's your, what's your religion? And people right, left, and center would be like, oh, Negroid is my religion. Negroid is my belief system. Wait, isn't that the ethnicity? The scientific listing of your ethnicity? I know the, ter the word Negroid is a horrible sounding word. In scientific literature, that's what it's referred to as, though. So you get the gist. But if they were to say, yeah, Negroid is our ethnicity, and that's also our religion. You'd be like, what? Huh? Isn't your religion or idea separate from that? Or if you were to go up to Europe and ask, uh, so what's your religion or lack thereof? Oh, Caucasoid. That's my religion. Uh, and one guy says, to you, oh, but I'm a non-religious Caucasoid. I adhere to the Caucasoid religion, but this other guy doesn't adhere to the Caucasoid religion. You'd, you'd pretty much start losing your mind, wouldn't you? But for some reason, there's one group that's allowed to do that only, and only that group is allowed to do that. Only that group. Only, only, only. Why? 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 What's the reason? Well, we'll explain the reason in this video or others. So, folks, keep this in mind and be vividly aware. If this video gets deleted, you will know exactly why. Because it won't be me removing it. I can guarantee you that one. <clears throat> and if I did or need to, I would tell you ahead of time. Hey, I needed to remove this video, blah, 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 from my end for this reason, etc. But if I don't specify that, and I don't tell you that I removed it from my end for my own reasons, well, you'll know who removed it and why, and you'll know exactly the reason as well. So, stay tuned. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> There's many different ways to tackle this topic, but you have to be hyper-precise and hyper-exact, and you cannot even allow the slightest little bit or little amount of error in how you present the topic. Why? Well, because any lack of precision brings you into what is called the word trap, all right? So if you use the word, if you use the trap word, and you say it, 
then you get trapped into the narrative that you are opposed to both an ethnicity, a race, and a religion at the same time. And a narrative, a narrative gets spun about you that is not accurate, that is not correct. That's the trap. That's the idea. That's the reason the same word is used for both in order that you will be trapped as soon as you use the word and not be able to actually call out the darkness they're in. <clears throat> so, the individuals known as the Chosenites, or rather the Chosen Ones, etc., those who adhered to the religion of the three-letter word, or rather those who refer to themselves as Babylonian Talmudists, these individuals who adhere to this religion or ideology are adhering to a racist ideology in the vast majority of manifestations and versions of it. And you can confirm this by reading the text itself. In the Babylonian Talmud directly, you see racist statements being made right, left, and center. That's clearly what the text is about. There it is, right? So nobody can deny that it's a racist text because it so obviously is. So anybody who's voluntarily adhering to that as their belief or religion, well, is adhering to a racist belief system or ideology. It's that simple. This is why in your words, you need to always leave out the three-letter word and only ever specifically talk about Babylonian Talmudism, the specific belief itself, distinguished from Yahudim, which is the ethnicity, slash, quote-unquote, race. Two separate things that must be discussed separately, and only discussed separately, so that you never fall into the word trap. The three-letter word trap, okay? You'll notice I never use the three-letter word when talking about these topics. There's a reason for that. There's a reason I don't use it. <clears throat> because of the word trap. Because I'm beyond familiar with it, and I'm sure you all are beyond familiar with it as well. So here's the next question. Why is it that there was never a mass uproar at any point in history of Yahudim, ethnically, against the use of this three-letter word in reference to themselves? Why didn't they insist that the three-letter word only refer to a religion and not to their ethnicity? Why didn't they demand this en masse loudly on a large scale? They had thousands of years to do so, and it's quite a simple thing. Hey! Motherfucker, we're going to use two separate terms. Don't you dare use the same word for our ethnicity and religion, you fucking asshole. Don't do that. You're not allowed to. You don't have our permission to do that. Nope, they just went along with it for thousands of years. Why? Why? Even though going along with it for thousands of years led to so many problems and issues and interpersonal conflicts with others because they never agreed to use a separate term, which they so easily could have done, which would have solved the majority of the issues, actually. So what happened was every time the chosen ones were expelled from country after country, or rather the people who agreed to use the same word for their ethnicity and religion, every time this happened over and over, it always happened right when the king or queen or the leaders of that country realized what was in the Babylonian Talmud, what the actual beliefs or teachings of the Talmud were, and that they were racist teachings and ideologies. And then they also understood that, wait a minute. The ethnicity and religion are being classed as the same thing by the vast majority of these individuals, and they refuse to separate the two things out. So therefore, bye-bye, you have to leave. You can't do this. Combined with the fact that the banking system of that particular country was messed with and taken over, and people were extorted money-wise, people who were in situations of desperation, up to and including nobles and kings who were in debt, etc. And they realized this. They're like, wait a minute. A lot of these debts we can't really pay back. And a lot of these situations of being loaned this money in this situation like that, these individuals are vicious about the payback having to happen and needing to occur chop, chop, pronto, boom, boom, or else, right? That's a problem because other groups of people are opposed to that psychology, that degree of mercilessness in thought and action and behavior. And so this is the pattern that kept going and going and going. But the narrative was spun that everybody else just had it out for 
and was racist towards this group and hated them, sure, there is plenty of people throughout history who were like that and have been that way. Of course, that exists. But the vast majority of the reality of it is the fact that that wasn't actually the case at all. It was simply the fact that, wait a minute, people found out what the beliefs themselves actually were and that the beliefs were completely contrary, contradictory to the laws of the state or country that they were particularly in. <clears throat> and the ideologies were totally built and designed to subvert and screw over, financially, specifically, and in particular, the people of that particular region. And this is how it went down. This is how it played out, right? That's the reason of the expulsion one time after another, after another, after another, etc., right? The disbursement, right? Also known by another word. So I'm, I'm actually very interested to see. I'm actually doing this as a test video to see if it actually does stay up. We'll see. We will see, won't we? Because I'm beyond aware, beyond vividly fucking aware that so many different content creators who have talked about this topic in blatant open terms especially, but even in more under wraps terms, like across the board, there's been tons of their channels removed from YouTube and elsewhere online up to the point of them having personal financial issues and stuff with their banks and stuff. So yeah, there's a weird fucking pattern with this stuff and everybody knows why everybody, everybody knows why this is going on. You don't even have to be in conspiracy hype land. It's so fucking obvious. Okay. So goddamn obvious. Why? Unbelievably obvious. So watch, observe. And if this video does get taken down or blooped off YouTube, shoot me an email, talk to me, contact me because we can actually get really far in terms of talking with each other about this topic going forward. Um, so watch out for that. Keep an eye out for it. Okay. <clears throat> Be very interesting to see what happens. <clears throat> and I will screenshot if there's any listed reason or this or that, or what, I will screenshot the listed reasons. Boom. And upload that in a separate video later to show you exactly the confirmation of what I'm talking about in this video. And I'll save a copy of this video as a backup file for those who need the reference as well and just re-upload it elsewhere if I need to. So it's not going to really be useful for it to be deleted because I'll just re-upload it somewhere else if I need to. <sighs> so I really wish everybody would understand this because this is the most important part of this topic of them all folks. Okay. The most important topic, the most important aspect of this topic there is. I've come to realize very clearly and very vividly that God, uppercase G, is in fact an omni-malevolent entity, okay? And in fact, this God entity is the entity that the chosen ones are directly worshiping and getting power from. So if you're worshiping the most powerful entity, which is the most malevolent being of them all, of course you're going to get power from that entity. You're going to get influence, affluence, success in subversive ways, because this omni-malevolent being at the root of all reality is also omni-subversive, okay? Mazy in its consciousness, multi-layered in its calculatedness, right? Sort of like the Zinch deity, the chaos god within the Warhammer 40,000 lore, for all you Warhammer 40,000 fans out there, wink, wink. Very similar to that kind of a being, combined with features of the other chaos gods. What's interesting is, in that lore, all these different chaos gods are like the different aspects of exactly uppercase G God in the reality we observe now, right? You have Korn, the blood god, who likes to destroy and rip everything apart. Zine choose the god of change and subversiveness and manipulation and twistiness, mutation. Then you have uh, the god of decay, right? The rot god Nurgle, who is all about decay, entropy, death, things rotting away, putri putrefaction, infection, etc., disease, swarms of insects, flies. And then you have Slanesh, the deity of excess in all its forms, excess pleasure, excess pain, blissful orgasm, all the way to excruciating torture. And you have these four aspects of the chaos that is at the back door of all reality, right? And of course, you have the horned rat, Additionally, on top of that, which has to do with connivy scheminess uh, of nefarious varieties, mischief, the god of mischief, basically, right? <clears throat> 
whereas Zinch is more about mutation and change and twisted, warpy agenda stuff. The Horned Rat is more specifically about um, techno mischief and, you know, thus rats, right? Backstabbiness and all this type of stuff, <clears throat> etc. <cetera>. Conniviness. <clears throat> So if you can understand that God uppercase G is in fact an omnimalevolent being, and that is exactly why this chosen one's chosen by who? Well, chosen by omnimalevolent God. That's who. Duh. And that's the reason they're subversively successful, but not openly successful. They're only successful via subversion and extremely successful via subversion. Unbelievably successful via subversion. Well, then you understand why, because they're aligning with the nature of God directly, which is subversive, manipulative, evil, vile, etc. Connivy, schemey. You get the drill. <clears throat> and you also actually can gain power and influence in life and in the world by aligning with a specific aspect of root reality and deciding your parameters to act within therein. You also can actually take advantage of exactly what they're doing in your own way. But here's the dark reality of it. They know that the vast majority of the world will never, under any circumstances, embrace any degree of sadism actively or openly, either micro or macro. But they are willing to do so, so that's the difference. So you notice how all the genuinely kind, loving, good-hearted people in the world are always the ones never actually really achieving anything large-scale ever, really, that lasts well, that's simply because all the goody two-shoes in the world, or people who believe that they're goody two-shoes, never actually engage actively in conscious, intentional, sadistic acts. But reality operates on the principle of being a grind -a machine, a torture scape, no matter what, no matter what you desire or intend otherwise. So basically, this group, the chosen ones, have just gotten in the groove of that being the reality and indulge in that reality within their specific parameters, and the rest of us simply don't to the degree that they do. It's really that simple. But if you do jump into what they're doing in your own unique way, you'll also gain power, you'll also gain influence, you'll also gain huge amounts of sex pleasure, affluence, fame, recognition, or whatever variation of thing it is you desire specifically to have, you'll have that more easily accessible to you. And you'll have a mindfuck take place in your brain, actually, in relationship to it, that frees you from a lot of these things that previously would have held you back psychologically and otherwise in action, right? And you'll be a far more honest person in specific ways for it, <clears throat> while maintaining whatever lies you decide to maintain off to the side elsewhere. <clears throat> So people have it wrong and incorrect and are missing the mark on it if they think that this group is serving a lesser branch off rebellious entity to the source being, and that's why all these vile, horrific, terrible things are happening at their hands, specifically in the realm of finance and what is financed in particular. What's actually going on is they're actually getting fueled by God directly, omni-God, source directly, raw potentiality directly. This is the reason they're so opposed to idolatry, quote-unquote idolatry, the representation of God, or uppercase G, source malevolence, in physical forms of beauty that are akin to forms we see here. Why? Well, because they're obsessed with the raw potentiality principle directly that remains invisible to specificity, specific features, etc. They're opposed to that because they want to get power directly from power directly, from potentiality directly, whereas many other groups are interested in specificities, because specificities are what? The rebellion against raw potentiality. So they know that via specificity, via deity worship, which they class as idol worship, other groups are getting empowered in regards to hyper-specificity and alignment with the fallen angels, angles, the fallen angles of philosophy and vision, right? And you're getting power the more specific you are, the more branched off from source you are, if you are an active practitioner 
of one of the rebellious ideologies against root source, or rather one of the game ideologies against root source. The great game, as it's called in Warhammer 40,000 lore. The reason I bring up Warhammer 40,000 is you'll, you'll notice that the lore in that book is very, very, very well thought and laid out, and it's very accurate to what reality is that we actually observe. That's what that's why it's so popular and so many people like it. The theme is grimdark. So the theme is basically talking about, okay, what if in fact we're in a world where literally every single powerful being above the human level is some variation of malevolence? So even the God Emperor, the leader of mankind, is himself a diabolical evil being passing himself off as good. The human race in that Scenario is one of the most evil factions there are, <laughs> but they don't believe or recognize that they're evil. You see, does that ring a bell? Does that sound similar to humans today? Yeah, it does. Doesn't it? It's a very dystopian. That's why I'm a fan of the lore. And of course the game itself is very fun painting the figurines and playing it on the tabletop. Warhammer as well as historical war game and stuff like that. Um, it's quite a fun hobby. You should check it out sometime if you haven't already, <clears throat> but the reason I bring that up is because it so accurately correlates with what we're really actually dealing with in reality here. It's very reality akin or attuned, you know, like scenarios, how would things realistically play out if we actually kept advancing into the future to crazed degrees? Well, it's a very plausible way that things might actually play out, you know? Um, so the idea with this is that... <clears throat> The more you recognize about reality itself, the more you recognize about what's actually happening, the more you understand that at the root of everything is omnimalevolence, and you understand how to navigate omnimalevolence effectively, akin to navigating a ship amid turbulent waters, raging waters that are dangerous and full of vicious animals trying to rip you apart and your ship. You get good at navigating the torture hellscape somewhat, right? <clears throat> and so that's what I focus on doing. Strategic effective navigation via pleasure mechanisms of the torture hellscape to ensure my own containment bubble and those close to me, as well as informing others of exactly how to navigate the torture escape as well, effectively, in ways that busts them out of excessive unnecessary degrees of depression that they would otherwise be freed from if they were able to embrace sadism to some notable degree in a controlled way. <clears throat> or absorb themselves into obliviousness effectively and strategically in a knowing intentional contained way, depending on the personal inclinations of the individual. So all these conspiracies, this grand conspiracy to rule and control the entire world, well, these chosen ones have been ruling the entire world financially, symbolically, thematically, for quite a while now, and it's quite obvious. Hollywood, of course, everybody knows about that, are permeated with these individuals who have the psychology and this awareness and this understanding. And so therefore, the subconscious themes, the collective consciousness egregores, the ideas that people talk about and engage in, the trends, the patterns, including antinatalism, metaphilism, and that being a popular thing right now, including that, are within the grander scheme of things. So, groundedness, back to groundedness now. Let's distinguish conspiracy reality from conspiracy hype train land, okay? Conspiracy reality is that there are a lot of individuals who adhere to this ideology because it's ingrained in them as children as they grow up, and they're taught that they are this set-apart chosen race from everybody else, and many of them buy into it and genuinely believe it, or it becomes ingrained in their brain chemistry. Yes, it is child abuse, and it needs to stop. It's a fucked up thing to do to kids, but it happens nonetheless. But then you have others who totally reject it. So here's how you know who is who. Here's how you find out if you want to find out. If you meet one of these individuals and they have revealed to you that, oh, yes, I am this three-letter word that rhymes with who. And you're like, oh, interesting. Religiously or ethnically. And then that gets sorted out. Then afterwards... What you do is you ask them very specifically, a very pinpointed question, and observe exactly what their response is. This will tell you everything you need to know immediately, with no guesswork. Ask them, why 
are you okay or in agreement with using the same word for a religion and an ethnicity? Do you oppose that? Do you think that's a bad idea? Do you think that should change? And if their answer is yes, that should change, we should oppose that. That's stupid. I don't agree with that. That's fucked up. Anything along the lines of agreeing with the sense that that shouldn't be the case and they shouldn't use that word, separating out the ethnicity from the religion and confirming to you that that's a good idea. Then boom, you have someone who's honest, trustworthy, and not adhering to the agenda. Okay, there you go. Or at least someone who's willing to speak against the agenda verbally and at least consider other possibilities at the very least. Okay, because it's considered blasphemy or tantamount to blasphemy to reject the agenda in that way, actually. Now, if someone responds by trying to wiggle warm away or change the topic or get squeamy or if they go really dark, which is quite common, and get really aggressive or angry or like if their demeanor towards you changes when you ask this from happy to jolly to something other, sad, depressed, bothered, etc., then you know you've got someone who is knowingly or unknowingly adhering to the agenda and in agreement with it and not being honest with you about that, okay? You've got someone who knows they're racist in ideology and thought, or is at least going along with others who are racist in ideology and thought, and they're not willing to speak up against it. Okay? Because they know there's hell to pay. So that's how you tell who is who, who is part of the agenda or who not. It's that one single specific question. You ask them about what is their thoughts on the, the solid required separation of the term into two separate things. So Yahudim, in reference to the ethnicity, and Babylonian Talmudists, Judaists, and the three-letter word applying only to a religion and never again to an ethnicity or a race, ever again for the rest of eternity going forward, or obviously within reason, within the fold of history going forward, in order to separate out the definitions. Ask them about what they feel about that, and they will tell you everything you need to know, okay? This is what I've done every single time, and it works like a charm every single time. Because the ones who are involved in the agenda, they go dark, they get all like, they, their demeanor changes immediately. Immediately the demeanor changes, okay? The ones who are reasonable, who don't have anything to do with the bullshit ideology, and who are opposed to it like they should be, are individuals who acknowledge your point and agree with you on it, like wholeheartedly. No, no change in demeanor. It's just straight up, yeah, that's fucking stupid. That's bullshit. I don't agree with that. Fuck that crap. You know, like, boom. Now, people might say, well, they might just be lying to you, following the principle of lying to you that they're told to do in their texts. Sure, that might be possible. But denying the use of that term for themselves is a very powerful thing. It's a, it's a thing very few of them are willing to ever do, okay? It's a very powerful act in opposition to the agenda, okay? Because they're making a declaration that they are a, an entity or an individual who's rebelling against the root agenda, okay? And very few of them are willing to do that, okay? So it's a beautiful thing when you see that. Because make no mistake, just like Islam and Christianity and these other ideologies that are also adhering to a fucked up agenda, this one particular agenda is particularly noteworthy for being especially racist in nature. Of a nefarious variety. Many hypothesize and say and claim often that God to them is their race directly, is their ethnicity directly, that God isn't some separate other thing, that God is in fact they themselves collectively as a whole. Boom. Others suggest all sorts of other hypotheses, but I would encourage people to understand this very clearly. If you have a matrilineal line as the required source of the continuation of your genetics, which the many of these individuals are quite obsessed with, Thus, the reason why they're okay with women marrying men of other ethnicities, but not men marrying women of other ethnicities. They get on men for that and guilt trip them for that if that occurs. The reason for this is quite obvious. Well, if you have a root omnimalevolent entity that is the femiurgic being at the root of all reality, goddess uppercase G, god uppercase G, etc., it, she, he, it, 
Well, of course, you're going to have to continue that line matrilineally, aren't you? Because you're dealing with an entity at the root, which is gyno, which is at the very root root root, the twisted, warped, original origin of everything later that was benevolent femininity, but at the root, at the start, is a toxic, horrifying being at the source of it all, including being the source of masculinity as well. In other words, you have an entity at the root of everything that is the source of both femininity and masculinity, but masculinity is a is a warped, glitched, extended variation of root femininity, the root feminine principle, which is originally an omnimalevolent principle. And again, everything that's benevolent is something that is artificially created and maintained against root reality, not something that is just there floating around in root reality. It's something that's maintained against root reality, against source. So the male form, the penis, is actually a variation on the clitoris, an extension of the clitoris, a mutation of the root female form, okay? That's what the penis is. So men are mutants from females, thus why this Chosenite group is so obsessed with the matrilineal line, yet worships a male emphasis entity, although they acknowledge Shekinah and the principle thereof, this feminine principle. Their emphasis is on the male aspect of the femiurge. Why? Well, it's quite obvious. Because the male aspect of the femiurge is the dominating, controlling, toxic aspect of femininity that they worship and serve. Which manifests in the mutated, warped form of the male, the penis, the extension from the body, etc. Thus, the story continues. Now, if I lost you there, and you weren't following, or you just got jumbled up information-wise... We'll go back and cover that topic again in many pieces of content going forward. So thank you for your patience. But the next thing I want to cover is these people's obsession who adhere to this ideology with words and numbers. There's an entire book, Numbers, in the holy, the quote-unquote holy Bible, the Tanakh, the Old Testament, right? The Torah. an entire book dedicated to fucking numbers. Think about it. Think about it. A book dedicated to genes, Genesis, Genesis. Another book dedicated to exiting, Exodus. Another book dedicated to a bunch of racist insanity. A book dedicated to numbers directly. So on and so forth. You get the drill. And you'll notice in the Song of Solomon, he's praying to a female entity. He's correlating God with a feminine lover, romantic lover. Ding, 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 femiurge. In her female lover aspect. Subversively. Of course. As always. As God, as goddess, God always is subversively. That way. So, the jealous lover, right? The jealous lover. Goddess God, Femiurge, the jealous one who wants your love for herself, itself, himself. You see? Oh, make no mistake. The omnimalevolent being at the root of all reality is very jealous for your affection. Very jealous. And wants it one way or another. One way or another, I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna get you, get you, get you, get you one way or another. You recall that song? Remember? It's interesting how these themes are encoded in popular music, right? To remind you that the Femiurge is always out to get you. She's always going to come for you some way. She's going to get you one way or another, okay? Best you believe it. She's going to fucking get you one way or another, all right? That's how it goes in reality. One way or another, all right? If not one way, then another way. So... Their obsession with numbers and words, we see this all over the place in where, in what? Well, obviously Hollywood. Numbers and words permeate everything you're watching. It's what? It's sounds and it's images and things being said. So it's encoding. Okay, so there's a certain time frame that a movie lasts. There's a certain number time frame it lasts. Okay, certain amount of frames, right? And within those frames, you have what? You have words being spoken and visuals being seen. So it's plenty of time to encode and implant all sorts of occult 
esoteric knowledge, themes, Jungian archetypes, etc. Because what's interesting is this other group, they're known for taking the best of the best, the most useful of the useful of all other ideologies they encounter. There seems to be a very interesting lack of actual originality within the fold of their views and ideologies. Every single aspect comes from another group. It's very interesting, very intriguing when you look at this, right? So the, a huge amount of it comes from the Canaanites, okay? And many speculate and hypothesize that the Canaanites branching off are, in fact, the modern-day Yahudim ethnic, ethnically and um, have that view towards it, which is a possibility. There's a lot of evidence that actually suggests that, that the conquest of Canaan, quote-unquote, was a twisted, warped variation of what actually took place. We'll talk about that later some more. But the theme you need to understand is the Babylon mystery religion, which stemmed from Sumeria, okay? the first known and confirmed human civilization on earth, according to all the evidence we've seen. The Babylon mystery religion, which extended from the Sumerian religion before it, and which was then taken over to Canaanite, the Canaanites, the land of Canaan, the Levant area, which was then uh, continued on by the Phoenicians of the region of Tyre, that city of Tyre, and also up into North Africa, etc., throughout the Mediterranean. And that point in history where the Phoenicians were fighting against and contending with the Romans, right? So there's many people that speculate and hypothesize, well, the Canaanites, the Phoenicians never disappeared. They never died. They just warped and twisted and subversively infiltrated Rome and all these other countries and worlds. And that's what they kept doing. They were still around occultically and esoterically as teachers, as advisors and things. They didn't disappear after the conquest of Carthage. They just dispersed within the populations that they lived amongst, like they had done all throughout history before that, right? So their major influences were from Sumeria, and also later the Babylon mystery religion via the Babylonian um, the Babylonian exile. And, of course, the Persian religion, the Zoroastrianism, the good versus evil dynamic, God versus the devil, the good God versus the evil God. So all of these narratives you see in the Old Testament and the Bible, they're hodgepodge together in a very specific encoded way via the Canaanite system, together to make an esoteric encoded book referring to the, these principles that we're talking about right now, okay? You notice how insanely that evil that God is throughout all the Old Testament. It's quite obvious, but also the God of the New Testament is extremely evil as well, but subversive in a different way. Posing as good more effectively to many people in the New Testament, whereas before the entity was not posing effectively as good other than to psychopaths, sociopaths, or people who just don't think very deeply, right? But people who think deeper, well, okay, another face is required. So you need the Jesus face, the sacrificial God, but still it's full of bloodshed and dark overtones and everything else because reality is a torture hellscape. It's dark, it's bloodshedy. That is reality itself. That's why. So, boy, wouldn't it be nice if reality was a unicorn fart fairyland, you know, where you could thunk big ass women forever only as the only thing that ever goes on eternally with no possibility of anything else. That would be fucking cool as hell, but it's just not that way. Is it sucks ass? Doesn't it literally because you have to suck ass because you can't thunk it all the time. The way reality goes because people are cursed with bodies that they don't want a lot of the time. Right. You know what I'm referring to? Oh, <sighs> So this is why it's essential that you're well endowed as a man, because if you're not, well, you're basically screwed because you can't reach the back wall. You can't thunk. You're reduced to having to lick and suck, right? That's why it sucks. Literally for men in that situation. And God knows it well. All right. God in his subversive ways, AKA quote unquote, mysterious ways, right? They just love the mystery principle, the mysteriousness, right? Translate subversiveness, right? Mystery equals subversiveness. Because if you're honest and open and not deceitful, you don't have to be mysterious, do you? You can just directly be honest and straight up with people. No need for mystery at all. But no, nope, mystery is required. Mystery has to be there because Babylon mystery religion. That's why. And what's interesting is Christians don't even realize that when they say, Oh, God in his mysterious ways, they're literally catering directly to the Babylon mystery religion, and they're not even realizing it by fucking saying that. <laughs> they think they're separate and aloof from the Babylon mystery religion, that they've escaped it, that they're practicing something else. Bullshit. 
You're literally saying in the next sentence, God works in mysterious ways. That's motherfucking Babylon mystery religion bullshit. But they don't realize it. <sighs> Face palm times a million, anyone? Feeling bruised already just thinking about it, you know? Jesus Christ. <sighs> what a nightmare, man. What a nightmare bloodshed narrative in the New Testament, right? The reason the Yahudim who practice Judaism, Babylonian Talmudism, the reason they despise the Christian narrative so much, the reason they despise Yeshua so much of the Christian narrative is specifically because they know he's a mythologized made up figure, but he's been so effective in use via the Romans and other groups in hindering and slowing down their ability to control everybody as effectively as they would otherwise have done without the New Testament and the Christian narrative. You see? You see? So it basically created a massive inconvenience for them in the form of, ah, oh, shit. So they're using our Old Testament. They're using our Torah, our Tanakh, and all this other type of stuff, our Talmudism. They're using this, and then they're mixing it with this other narrative they concocted and created that was used and created majorly by the Romans for political and other ends. Uh, we'll talk about that later in other videos. And, ah, oh, fuck. Okay, so we can still subvert them. We can still screw them over. We can still rule them underneath the surface. But they just made it that much more inconvenient for us to do so, right? Still doable. They're still doing it. It just slowed them down by many hundreds of years, okay? More like about a thousand or so years. So that's why they get pissed off at that. And that's why they despise the Christ narrative so much, because it slowed them down. It didn't stop them. It didn't prevent anything. It just slowed them a bit, right? In an annoying kind of a way. So they're like, ah, oh, fuck, we have to recalculate, replan. We have to figure out how to fully subvert these people all the way now because now they're paranoid of us. Uh, and thus the story goes, right? <sighs> so here's what people need to understand. You must, you must never be racist yourself ever under any circumstances in talking about these things or thinking about them or in how you feel towards others. You must feel genuinely deep affection for others. That is real. Okay. Specifically and in particular, inclusive people of these ethnicities, as well as ideologies, appreciate loving them beyond the, their insane ideology itself. Okay. While going forward and calling out the bullshit of the ideologies themselves. The trap in the pit so many fall into is they become racist themselves against those who are racist against them. That is the uppercase T-H-E biggest trap of them all, okay? Because that is exactly, listen very carefully, that is exactly the trap that the three-letter worders who rhyme with who want you to fall into. They want you to fall into the trap of yourself becoming racist towards them. That is what they desire for you. Because that way you fall into their narrative about you. Do you understand now? Good. I'm glad you understand. And the vast majority of people being emotionally tribalistic and this group of people knowing that the most majority of you are emotionally tribalistic will fall into racism. They know that and they count on it. Okay? Thus the raging redneck beer belly. Yeah! The Aryan race brotherhood bullshit, right? Those guys. Yeah, that's exactly what they want. They want you to be a birch belping, burp belching, pot bellied, you know, rednecked, ball cap wearing, truck driving, loudmouth. They want you to be that persona because then you fall into their narrative. You see? Do you see how it works? Doesn't it make sense? That's exactly what they did with the Germans with Germany, too. Yes, yes, the Germans did horrendous stuff that they shouldn't have done. It was terrible and fucking awful. They weren't good either. They were also evil motherfuckers, okay? None of them were good. And anyone who is innocent, a child or a woman, who is just caught in the crossfire, that is insanely vile for people to be harmed like that or disabled people in every single circumstance, okay? It's never justified. It doesn't matter what ideology they hold or were forced into believing or have in their brain chemistry or what. No, it's always unacceptable to harm people, period. It's never justified, okay? Even if it's absolutely necessary in cases of war or whatever the hell, it's never okay. It's fucking evil as shit. So don't even go there, all right? Because the problem is this. 
Worldwide, when people talk about these things, they immediately fall into the pit and the trap, which is set for them intentionally of making the same goddamn mistake the Germans made in the 1940s, 1930s, which is what? Well, they en masse became racist against this other group. That was the pitfall. And look how that turned out for them. Look how that fucking went for them. Look how it went for them. Observe what happened to them when they did that. Watch what fucking happens when you do that en masse. You all know what happens when people do that and think that way. It's obvious. You fall right into the trap because now you're a racist, bigoted motherfucker yourself. And you're as much a piece of shit, if not more, than the very group you're trying to expose for being racist. You fuckhead. Come on. You can do better than that. For fuck's sake. So what you'll have... It's what I call stop short syndrome. Other people, other content creators, other individuals who talk about this, they'll stop short and let you fall into the pit of racism towards another group because they're dumbass motherfuckers who don't think deep enough about it. That's why. And they don't recognize the trap that it is. That's why. Okay. So you have the baseline information, which you understand is that, okay, okay. I understand the layout. Now you get the lay of the land, but then you fall into the trap that is set for you which is pushing you to become a racist piece of shit, right? And pe people fall into it all the fucking time, folks. All the fucking time of every other group. Other groups regularly take to racism against this other group. Regularly. For this exact reason. You get snared right up in the fucking trap. And it only realizes it's fucking happening to them. Because most people, being emotionally tribalistic, they can't process things beyond how they emotionally feel about things. So their brain, in its clunky ape-like state, correlates ethnicity with, oh, auto-genetics equals auto-evil, auto-this, auto-that, automatically this, that, and the other. Bullshit. Right? Because they're monkey brains, that's why. And the racist among the Yahudim count on you being monkey-brained. So don't be monkey-brained. Capiche? Cool. So this is when they say they can control the entire world, this is how. Because everybody's racist against them and emotionally tribalistic when they learn these things. Almost everybody is, while denying that they're racist. And then therefore, boom, they have them. They have them by the balls. Hook, line, and sinker, right? Hook, line, and stinker. <clears throat> All the while, everybody thinks they're resisting and are these Neo versus the Matrix. And come on, man. <laughs> you even realize or know what that movie was made for there's a fucking spawn on the entirety of all the pill movements and all of the fucking ideologies that are conspiracy ideologies of neo versus the matrix narratives into the mainstream that's what it was designed for if you haven't noticed and it worked like a fucking charm like it always does <laughs> Because you're too goddamn emotionally tribalistic, you're too fucking monkey-brained to be one of the hyper-intelligent, ruminating, fixating types like myself and the few others that probably are listening to this video who think many layers further into stuff than everybody else does, okay? Who think so far into shit it pisses people off because they can't think that fucking far and they get irritated over that fact, okay? Because monkey brains are painful brains. So that's why they get headaches so fucking easy and all this shit like that, you know? All right. So now, after spewing my elitism spiel about my own intellectual superiority at everybody else, the asinine narcissistic shithead that I am, factually, I hope you have gotten a lot of useful information from this video up to this point. And I hope you now have a much clearer understanding of what's going on in the world and why. And it's very important that you always remind yourself and remember if you're ever come to a standstill or a question mark about why something is happening that's bad or awful or why your plans for helping your fellow man or yourself or doing the best for the world are always foiled and fucked with, always, come to this remembrance and bring yourself back to this groundedness of, oh, of course, of course, because God, source, is evil, more evil than the Demiurge, more evil than anything in this world could ever be. The world of spirit is more evil than this world. All of it. All of it. Okay? And then, boom, you are now grounded again back to that's why. 
That's why I couldn't save my relative. That's why my plans were foiled. That's why everything was fucked with. That's why all these innocent people I care about were totally destroyed and tormented. That's the reason. Because that, that, that's why. That's the reason. Okay? You'll stop scratching your head. You'll stop wondering why. And you'll know why. You'll know, you'll know, you'll know, you'll be certain, you'll know exactly why, and you'll be able to articulate every single detail of everything that happened, every single detail of what was foiled in what you wanted to do, and you'll know exactly why. Okay? There you go. But this group also counts on you forever, maintaining this hopium and crossing your fingers for your entire existence, that there is in fact a benevolent entity out there wanting to take care of you and care for you and everything else with everything you've got. And they know you're inclined towards that. If you're of a different group, they know your inclination is towards something like that. They know it. They know it. And they use that to control you. Do you see? They use that exactly to control you. How you think, why you think the way you do, why you do what you do, etc. Okay? It's not that hard to do, actually. Because historically, they saw words as spells. That's why it's called spelling. They're teaching kids how to cast spells in schools, and none of the kids or teachers have any idea what they're learning or being taught. None of them. They have no fucking clue. They're being taught how to cast spells in public education, in secular education. Okay? The Canaanite beliefs involved the secular world being directly the world of spiritual demonic transactions of a business variety, a world of the casting of spells via everything you said and did of either benevolent functions or malevolent functions. Okay. Writing was considered a mystical thing in the ancient past. That is why the elites were the only ones who knew how to write up until recent history until they decided to hand the ability to write to the masses as a whole. First, it started with nobles and then everybody else, but only after control was established throughout the world via this occult, esoteric, united cabal network of people who were among the elite intellectually and otherwise. Then and only then did they give the ability of spellcasting to the masses. Until then, they did not. In ancient times, it would have been unheard of to give the ability to spellcast to random-ass Joe Schmoes on the side of the street, for obvious reasons, because you would lose your power and your position very fast. Your ability to write and communicate via writing was your power up against and over and above those who couldn't write. That was your edge over them. Okay? So, of course, they didn't distri distribute that to the masses. Of course, it remained an elite thing. Because the winners, what? What do the winners do? What do the winners do? The winners write... The history books. That's significant. There's many layers of significance to that. People go, oh, no, it's just writing. No, no. The winners write. The winners write. Okay? The winners write the history books. Therefore, they are right in their explanations. In the subconscious, collective consciousness, minds of the masses who read what they write. You see? See how it all ties together now? So because they're obsessed with the spell casting, this is directly connected to the mantra obsession thing that goes on in India, the word obsession thing, right? Word repetition. We'll talk about that topic in another video coming up, okay? And of course, their obsession with the invisible God, the God of the air, the breath. And that's direct. So what do you do with your breath? You either breathe or you talk, you speak words, right? So they're obsessed with what? Breathing and speaking words, the breath of life and the spoken word and the written word, right? They're obsessed with it. They're obsessed with it because that is the ideology. Okay? That is the closest thing to raw potentiality used directly in the ways you want via power, the power principle, that there is. There's so many layers of significance to this deity principle that they classify as idolatry, which I'll cover in an entire video dedicated to the subject matter. Folks, how often do you hear the term wake up, wake up? It's gotten so old. I just, I tell people to sit back and take a deep breath and relax nowadays instead of waking up. I encourage you to lay down and just chill and breathe 
and calm rumination on these things. Dream, I say, and suggest, okay? Imagine, create. Be specific to counteract the principle of raw potentiality that they worship and serve. Because who did they list, who do they list, and who do they recognize are their main opponents, politically, ideologically, and in the world at large? Well, the hyper-intellectual elites outside of the fold of their direct ideology. Those who are not racist, those who know exactly what they're doing and the nature thereof, and those individuals who are hyper-specific in honing in on forming a reality that is separated out away from source as much as possible. It's only these kinds of individuals that are effective opponents to their agenda. You have to understand what the agenda is and who they're worshiping and where they're getting their power accurately to be able to actually oppose it to any real degree. You have to, and you have to do so while having actual affection for the people themselves directly. But almost no one in the world, almost no one has that psychology towards them or this agenda or anything else. So therefore, everybody else is a piece of cake to control. So you and me, people like us, will never be in the masses, will always be a minority of the population, and they directly say this, and they know this, so they don't really have anything to worry about, because we're never going to be critical mass. We're always going to be these stray individuals scattered throughout the world, never the mainstream, never the critical mass, never the mass of the populace anywhere. We're always going to be too small in number, everywhere, everywhere throughout history, and we always have been, okay? So... Thus the story goes, all right? So we're at a crossroads now where people really need to be informed of this specifically. They need to be informed in particular of exactly where this group is getting their power, how this is happening. People need to understand the omni-malevolence at the root of reality, which I'm incredibly grateful that my friend Mate assisted me in being informed of this and understanding this better. Um, And my other friend Igor as well. And various others, Okay. It was, it was the most helpful realization I'd ever had in my life. Period. Bar none. Okay? Among a few other key ones that I had leading up to it. <clears throat> so, I hope going forward you have a much more thorough understanding of this topic now. And believe me, we're going to cover many more aspects of this topic going forward. People want to hear more about the conspiracy stuff? Well, let's discuss it. I'm all for that stuff. And I want people to be educated and understand and know what to look for and be able to grasp that the conspiracy hype world itself, the land of conspiracy hype, is directly directed by this agenda, okay? And be able to distinguish that from conspiracy fact world, all right? Very important distinction. Very important ability to do one or the other. Because here's the thing. Not every single agenda of this group is automatically going to be an agenda not worth pursuing. Some of the agendas are worth agreeing with and worth pursuing. People try to act like I'm unaware of something, and that's really dumb because it's like, no. I'm just aware that certain agendas are worth pursuing and other ones are not. It's not a, it's not a complete absolute bag where every single last agenda is not one worth pursuing. Some of them are, actually. And we'll talk about that in other videos going forward. So without any further delay, this has been an hour-long video full of information. Please put it to use. Please share it. Please save it. Please do so. Just in case it gets deleted. Let's hope it doesn't. And I will talk to you soon. PB signing out and plunging in to the deepest depths of occult knowledge, esotericism, and the biggest booties that exist. Talk to you later. Have a good one.